and welcome once again to Life Without Shakers. And today is the start of a new chapter in my Wainwright journey. For today I begin the journey around the Northern Fells, uh, which is a boutique selection of hills which can almost be done in three walks, but not quite. That'll make the first walk, which I'm doing today, a bit of a stretch. So instead it's going to be split up into four walks. Uh, today's journey begins just close to the shores of Overwater, which you can just about see behind me. And from here I've got a three or four mile walk along the Cumbria Way to my first fell of the day, which is Bakestill. And from Bakestill I'm going to retrace my steps back towards Overwater via Great Cockup, Meal Fell, Great Scout Fell, Bray Fell and finally Longlands Fell. Uh, and that's going to be about a 13 or so mile loop um, and then once I get back to here I've got another little 3 or 4 mile loop up to the little outlying fell of Binzie. So um, it's going to be just over 18 miles I think in total in two little loops, or one big loop and one little loop. Uh, and it's perfect walking conditions at the moment, it looks like the sun's about to make an appearance. So, let's get going. I must admit, I'd never actually heard of Overwater until I started planning this walk. Well, it's a lovely setting. I think it's primarily a reservoir. But it still looks nice. Binzy poking out. Just to the left there. Right, this is the first slightly dodgy bit of today's route. Uh, I could easily have carried on down the road to where I wanted to be, but that would be monotonous. So, it's apparently a footpath, it's apparently back to the Cumbria Way. But it doesn't feel like it. Oh, maybe I should have stuck to the road. Might be boring, but it would have been easier. It doesn't look like this path's been used for a long time, it's practically invisible. Quite boggy in places. Still, getting a wonderful view of the hills in store. Just past the way, Mark. This is definitely part of the Cumbria Way. That same route I was following all the way down in Langdale. It's nothing like the same sort of standard of path here. You could easily get lost, as I have three times at least already today. That's an initial view of Bassenthwaite there in the distance. Hopefully she get some even better views of that as the day goes on. Excellent. Three and a half miles of random wandering around fields. That's brought me just about to the foot of the first fell in book five. Now, four and a half miles in, and I look at two pretty little waterfalls, one nearby, one just in the distance. Uh, I've reached the end of the preamble. This is where the real action of the day starts, because I'm going straight up here, right in front of me. Doesn't look very high though, just pretty steep. Goodness, it's starting to level out a bit. That was very steep on that first bit. Uh, normally, I don't, don't go up hillsides that steep, it's because I've gone the wrong way. But I was following a path, and it was the path that I followed. Still got six more fells to do after this one. Probably all not that steep. This climb is seemingly a little bit endless but I think I'm nearing the summit now. I was briefly a little bit worried I was going the wrong way and I was actually aiming for that summit over there but uh, that one is actually skiddo. Uh, I'm not doing that one today, saving that one for later. Well, it does look like a nice day to go up there, nice clear summit. I'll stick with 
Bextorf and out. After a bit of a steep climb and quite a lengthy trek, I've reached the first summit of the day and indeed the first summit of the Northern Fells. This is Bakestow, 2,189 feet. Even the most diligent student of maps of Lakeland is not likely to have noticed the name of Bakestow and few walkers will have heard of it. Bakestow, the name of a summit rather than of a fell, is a rough race platform on the sprawling north flank of Skiddo, merely halting the easy slopes and barely qualifying for recognition as a separate top. It would pass almost without comment but for its command of a scene of extraordinary interest, a unique combination of natural features that arrests the attention all the more because it is unexpected, startling and seemingly out of place among the smooth heathery uplands all around. It is quite a nice view, except the mist is closing in just as I get here. Got a great view back to Overwater, where I started. And all these fells across the valley are the ones I need to get across to get back there. Just uh, standing to leave the summit, I've just noticed Bassenthwaite on the other side. Didn't spot that before. Is the summit of Skiddo clearly visible with people on the top? I think there's another can here, which I'll film just in case it's at the high point. But I'm pretty sure it's not because you can clearly see that the can I was at before is definitely a little bit higher. But this is the path down into the valley on the way to my next fell. Great cock up, and lots of great puns will be had if I make a mess of navigating this bit. This is slightly annoying. I've got to endure this steep climb, which has taken me three quarters of the way up to the top of Great Calva, just to get onto the path towards Great Cock Up. Ugh. way down and a long way up again from where I was at Bakestall. Suddenly on a great flat expanse. Nice up here. So muddy. This seems like a lot of effort through a lot of bog just to get from one hill to another. It's uh, two miles already from Bakestall. Still nowhere near. Great cock up. So, the rest of these fellas must be very close together. It's actually crazy ridiculous here. It's a lovely early path, but it's a heck of a lot of effort just to get from one fell to another. I've nearly done half the walk. I've not even reached the second summit yet. Yep, still walking along this valley. Still not got to the point where the path turns uphill. It can't be far away now. These next three or four summits must be literally next door to each other. I'm sort of delighted to say the path has actually now started going uphill. Which is nice. Hey, made it to the ridge path. 
Well, there, there that is little cock up. But I don't do little cock ups. I just do great cock ups. Oh, hey! Here it is. it to summit number two of the Northern Fells, number 130 in total, and possibly the best named Wainwright of them all. This is Great Cockup, 1,720 feet. Wainwright says, viewed from a distance, Great Cockup appears as a modest but eccentric eminence with no obvious summit and nothing calling for closer inspection. Such impressions are confirmed by his tour of exploration, the fell under portfolio proving no more attractive than the fell at a distance. Although not ornamental, however, Great Cock is strongly functional, which perhaps matters more. This long spine rising steeply from Horseway divides the waters of the River Ellen from those of Trippity to the Derwent. Well, fairness, there might not be much here, but it does have a decent view. And Overwater is very close now. Uh, I was on Blake, uh, Bakestall. I was convinced in the next five miles I would have covered all the remaining fells. I didn't think it'd take five miles just to get to the next one. Uh, I was wondering what that uh, high looking one in the distance is there. But I think that's Binsey, annoyingly, which means I've got to do that one later today. cock up then we reach we're at number three of book five this is meal fell 1770 feet thrusting out from the smooth western declivity of great scar fell is a long ridge that swells into two subsidiary fells before coming down sharply to the little hamlet of Orthwaite. the first of these that near a great scar fell takes the form of a pyramid its summit appearing from certain viewpoints as a shapely peak Although of small and slender proportions, this fell is distinctive, and its summit is unusual. Yet the usual maps do not give it a name, the information being vouchsafed only in the ordinary sheets of two and a half inch scale and upwards, as Meal Fell. <sighs> right, onwards and downwards and then upwards again. That's a bit lucky. This ridge was hidden from the other side, so since that didn't have to go too far down at all. Go for that. It's have to go up though. Tough climb, but being chalked off thick and fast now. This is way my number four of the Northern Fells. This is Great Scar Fell, 2,131 feet. Way says the Old Dale Fells rising three ridges between west and north, emerging one common meeting ground at a place of greatest altitude. This focal point being a smooth, double headed uplift of grassy fell known to cartographers by the names of the twin summits of Great and Little Scarfell, but to farmers and shepherds mainly as Scarfell. No resemblance to any other Scarfell is intended, nor does it exist. 
Uh, there's even less up here than those in Great Cockup. Very little view of much apart from Skidder. And I think that's Great Calver. Uh, right, onwards across Little Scar Fell to Bray Fell and then Longlands Fell and then head yeah, back to the car but unfortunately not complete my journey at that point See, this is Little Scar Fell not technically a separate Wainwright but at least had the decency to build a nice shelter here and it's a superb view back towards Overwater, which seems even further away now than it did when I was at Great Cockup. Oh well, Bray Fowl, not too far away now, yeah. Oh, must admit this one snuck up on me a bit, despite the enormous cairn on the summit. I rather like it when you don't even realise you're walking uphill. This is Brayfell, 1920 feet. Waymark number five in book five. Waymark says Brayfell, with a name that seems a marriage of Scottish and Cumbrian influences, is the last outpost of Lakeland in the north, and already the typical characteristics of the districts are left behind. The outlook is toward the border, and the name is therefore perhaps not inappropriate. It is a bare grassy fell of moderate altitude only, though prominent in many views because of its position. A fine cairn crowns the summit, which is a good viewpoint, but there is little else of appeal. If all hills were like Bray Fell, there would be far fewer fell walkers. <sighs> Must admit, well, we're not without reason, he is being a little bit disparaging of these northern fells so far, although most of them have been rather bleak dreary summits. Anyway, under normal circumstances I'd be saying only one more fell to go and on back to the car. But not today because we still got to get to Binzi, which is preying on my mind a bit. It looks quite quite a long way away, quite a high climb. Now walking over Lothwaite Fell, which I thought I'd point out because according to the OS map this is the highest point on this ridge. Doesn't actually look like it. The highest point does actually look to be Long Longlands Fell over there, which is the one that Wainwright wrote about. Actually, now I'm here, Lothwaite Fell does look to be a bit higher. But nevertheless, this is Waymark number six of the Northern Fells. This is Longlands Fell, 1,580 feet. A simple, uncomplicated pyramid of Longlands Fell terminates the northwest ridge of Great Scar Fell and marks the end of Lakeland in this direction. Beyond is a pleasant countryside extending to the Solway Firth. It is a neat little hill conspicuous in many views, although overtopped by bulkier masses behind. The waters of the Ellen and the Eden catchments divide along its crest. <sighs> I have to say, it's taken a while, but we finally have some special views in the Northern Fells. Bastnathwaite in the distance, over water nearer, Binsey just behind it, that's my next target for today. Uh, 
side out towards Swigton and Carlisle in the other direction. If it hadn't taken so long to get here and if it wasn't quite so murky, I might linger longer. But time to get back and finish off today's walk. Off the pals now and back on the road back to Overwater. Normally at this point I'd be thinking of things to say to sum up today's walk but today not quite at that point. You've probably got about half a mile back to the car and then another mile and a half ish to the summit of Binzi and then another mile and a half back to the car again. On the other side is, it's only just going to half past four. No, just going to half past five like I thought it was. Which I might have been too badly for time. One thing I've just realised though is, it took it's about five hours to reach Great Cockup, which was the second fell of the day. Uh, so I can just over two hours from there to do another four fells and get virtually all the way back to the car. <laughs> crazy, crazy walk. Still not over. Bloody Binzy. Better be worth it. And I've made it back to the car. It's all over for today, I wish. Uh, I'm half wondering if I couldn't drive to the bottom of Binzi and just do the uh, climby bits, but that's not really in the spirit of things. One good thing about this extra few miles is that most of it is along the road. So I should be able to make a good lick. So it's not too hilly. little to worry about in terms of navigation on this stretch of road. It's been arrow straight for about a mile. I've had a look at the back of the Wainwright book and I may have been worrying for no reason about this. It looked high from a long way away, Vinci, but it's actually the second lowest fell in the book, just above Latrig, which is the baby hill just outside Keswick. So hopefully it's not going to take all that long to climb up a bit and get back down again. I think this is pretty much the foot of the climb at the end of the tarmac section. And as it turned out I could have driven and parked up, but that would have been cheating. Well the good news is it's not that steep after all. The bad news is it's still wearying after 16 miles. Nice easy descent now. Shining near the summit now. Hooray! It's about like a long drag up this hill. Probably only been about 10 15 minutes though. But at last, there's the summit. point and a big can over there. Oh, if it's got shelter, we call this a summit. And finally, the ridge. Binzi, 1466 feet. This is fell number seven of the Northern Fells and the final walk of the day. 
bins these, the odd man out. This gentle hill rises beyond the circular perimeter of the northern fells, detached and solitary, like a dunce set apart from the class. It is of no great height, is well within the category of Sunday afternoon strolls, has an easy slope just right for exercising the dog on the children, is without precipices and pitfalls, never killed or injured anyone, breeds hares instead of foxes, and is generally of benign appearance. Yet it is much too good to be omitted from these pages. For one thing, it is the most excellent station for appraising the northern fells as a preliminary to their exploration. For another, it is a viewpoint of outstanding merit. It possesses a grand little summit with once important but now forgotten history. Binzi occupies the extreme northwest corner of the Lake District. Beyond is the coastal plain, then the sea, then Scotland. Nothing intervenes to interrupt this sweeping panorama. What a domain and what a throne to view it from. High praise indeed for this smallest of fells. You can see the North Sea just about in the haze and the plain all the way up towards Carlisle and the Solway. Oh, and the sun's just about coming out. Ah, lovely little end to a lovely little day. Oh, pretty much back at the far end of overwater now, so I'm not too far away from the end of the walk, finally. Uh, it's been a, well, long, <laughs> actually overriding emotion. Uh, I think in isolation, all the individual bits of the walk would have been absolutely lovely on their own. Uh, that trek out to Bakestall would have been lovely on its own. That long drag between Bakestall and Great Cockup would have been lovely on its own. And then piecing the ridges together between Great Cockup and Longness Fell would have been lovely on its own. Even the climb up Binsey, taking out this uh, long tarmac drag, that would have been lovely on its own. But put them all together and it was just a little bit too long. Going for 19 miles actually, with all the uh, slight wrong turns at the start of the day. But it's been lovely. It's been sunny in parts. It's not been too hot. It's been, well, one or two good views from the last couple of summits, but yeah, that's slightly down. Slight downside was a slight lack of views. I'm hoping that's going to improve as I progress through the rest of the northern fells. But that's seven of them chalked off already. Right, well, I think that about wraps it up for today's walk. As ever, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you can join me again next time. Until then, bye.